Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever. On today's episode, we're gonna be building a squat rack. Now, squat rack, it's a uh, frame of steel. This one is completely inspired by the Mark Ripito starting strength squat rack. And uh, you know, I found plans for it online, made a couple slight adjustments to it. It's a frame to hold a barbell when you squat and also be able to keep yourself safe so you don't crush yourself into the ground if you fall. It's a pretty simple fab project, but it's gonna be a lot of fun fun to have it done and be able to use because since moving to the US I have just completely completely and totally and utterly got out of any sort of uh, working out routine which I had a little bit better back in the UK so hopefully this helps a little bit our old intern Kyle has already cut up all the pieces that we need and Will is gonna be jumping in just now to start drilling holes and fabbing some stuff together before we finish this thing. Thank you very much for joining us and I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, now that we have all 800 gabillion holes drilled in these parts, I'm gonna go ahead and start welding up kind of piece by piece as we move into uh, trying to build this huge frame. So kind of whatever fits on the table, we'll weld it together. And then at the end, we should have enough pieces welded together that we can stand it up and then affix it there and, and weld it together standing up in its final form. So we're gonna start off by welding up the first piece, the front left leg to the So Will has done a great job welding on these uprights in place. Now this is the front set of uprights. What we now need to do is put on the back set of uprights on them. Got them mounted here on the Rhino cast and uh, I'm gonna start welding the rest together. Will is uh, working on a little, uh, little project. He's working on his power hammer. I'm gonna weld this up. Now we're gonna jump in now to share an interesting experience that Will and I both had a little while ago. We went to Tactic, which is a local uh, kind of outdoors shooting school, and we took a class that they have called Surviving the Grizz, which is about not getting killed by grizzly bears. We're in grizzly country, southwest Montana. Uh, you know, so there are, there are grizzlies around, there are also black bears around, and every year, it's already happened a couple of times this year, people get themselves in a, in a prickly situation um, mm -hmm. with, a, with a grizzly bear. So we got to, first off, interact with a live 800 pound grizzly bear named Adam. Uh, we got to do all sorts of fun stuff, pet him, feed him donuts. He, he, he really likes donuts. He really likes oh, donuts, yeah. yes. It was an experience, but uh, ooh, we also got to hear Todd Orr, mm -hmm. who is a, is a guy, a local guy, who got mauled by a grizzly bear twice in one day. Yep. He had a bad time, but it was a lot. So here are some clips from that Awesome class with tactic. Just waiting on Will here in a here in a parking lot. Oh, I think I see his red Jeep just over there. All right, you ready, Will? Ready. I'm ready.
up on the ridge just coming wide open downhill ears laid back i just turned like that to go down and protect the back of my neck and she was on me that quick and she bit me five or six times in my right arm and shoulder and then she all of a sudden just that quick she was gone had to head down to the hospital and get some stitches and the trail crosses the creek and i was just about to walk across the creek there and all of a sudden i something caught my attention and i turned and here she was again 10 feet behind me this time coming wide open boom she knocks me down and bear spray goes flying and this time she's mad and her first bite was in my left forearm and i heard the crunch of the bone kind of turned me and i just saw her head right here looking into her eye and i'm like oh no pull it back in and then she just stepped off and disappeared and so i just held that position for like 30 seconds thinking okay i don't know if she's 10 feet away watching me and i reached up wiped the blood from my eyes kind of looked both directions i didn't see her anywhere and i had about three and a half four miles hike out of there so we finished up the uh in person in front of the grizzly bear portion of the class it was just unbelievable really fabulous experience to be able to feed the bear and pet the bear i mean it was just mind-blowing but it was very educational we learned a lot and then we also got to uh, listen to a local knife maker in fact who got mauled by a bear twice a little while ago and we got to hear him recount his story and talk about what he learnt and so it's just it's just been great we're now stopping for lunch and we're back at the school itself to learn more against other measures such as the bear spray How do you like bear spray, Will? Oh, it's great. I start using that as deodorant every day. So that was a super fun class, learning everything about how a bear behaves to learning about, you know, some of the options that you have to keep yourself safe while you're out in the woods. Something I learned is, let me tell you what, you gotta have that bear spray close by because those bears will come at you fast. In one bound, they can get up to 40 miles an hour. Scary stuff, so stay safe out in the woods. We're gonna jump back in to building this squat rack. We've got two frames built. We do indeed. They just need to be connected and we're gonna have a squat rack. How's the uh, power hammer looking, by the way? You guys will find out about that a little later. Power hammer is looking fantastic. Got to order a couple parts for it, three parts to be exact, and then we'll bolt it back together and it'll be smackalicious. Sneak peek. Don't look at it, it's naked. This is the second frame. This needs to get about here on this one. But the way we're gonna do it is by welding on all the bits that come up this way and then standing it all up and welding it together then. Wow! This thing is big. This is a big squat rack. So this is the frame done. We now need to work out how we put stuff onto the frame, such as the bar, for when you're actually lifting something. It's kind of probably a good thing to be able to get a barbell on a squat rack. And uh, this is where this comes in. Again, as per the uh, Mark Ruperto starting strength kind of thing, we've got ourselves this threaded bolt. We're gonna weld on this washer. This then goes at whatever height that you want it to go at. It stops and you throw a nut on the back. You seem confused. So what we're gonna do is, we are going to thread this nut on until it gets to about here. Use that to hold the washer in place. We're gonna weld around it all. Do that four times. We're gonna do that four times. And we're gonna have ourselves some bar holding thing or what's it. There we go.
we've got a squat rack. That's awesome. Great. We got the squat rack finished. It's in place at home. Now all I got to do is actually use it. We're also going to be getting that kitchen table, uh, <laughs> driving that back home and getting that in place. So that's going to be a workout on its own because that thing is like 200 pounds. As we finish the video, I want to talk about the fireball tool squares that we have been using to help kind of get all this stuff square. They're these things. They are just phenomenal. He has them in cast iron and cast aluminum and they're just phenomenal because they make layout and welding and fabrication so much easier because they're not just squares. In fact, they are more like very versatile jigs that allow you to clamp to them. You're not going to have so much fun trying to clamp to one of these things, but this is a bulky piece of cast iron with machined surfaces and the option of these tabs to really help line things up beautifully square. One thing we found really useful was still being able to get a weld on the inside corner or something thanks to the clearance that this angle gives. You've got a 90 degree, you've got 45s, you've got parallel sides. He's got all sorts of different sizes. The inventor and manufacturer, Jason from Fireball Tools, he's been here, he taught us how to use these things and he's made our fabrication skills go leaps and bounds. Will is now doing insane fabrication and welding. We're both improving and in large part from being able to use tools like that. Now you can get yourself a discount of these Fireball Tool squares when you go to fireballtool.com and use coupon FORGE at checkout. That also gets us a kickback, helps support this show, helps keep this on the move. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to go grab yourself a square and use code FORGE at checkout to let them know we sent you and to get that discount. I'd be very grateful. It's been a pleasure. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.